hello everybody. Um, today we're going to be going through um, a bit of an interesting one really. It's come up a couple of times in the community recently and uh, it's something that we've done in our production build. Uh, basically this is allowing us to link tickets um, to create that parent-child relationship but without having to go through the traditional Halo way of doing it. Right, so just to demonstrate the traditional kind of halo way of doing this is either link to another ticket or link tickets to this ticket. Either one of these will create a parent-child relationship between those two tickets. So by clicking that and selecting it, you can see I've now got the parent ID um, of the parent ticket here. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of stuff in here, right? And uh, this is actually showing me stuff across different customers and all sorts of potential problems with this system. Um, as well as if I wanted to filter by ticket type, I'd have to come into here and click ticket type and then select one to be able to see what's going to be returned. So instead of that, we built our own uh, system for it. Um, and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the whole process of building out this system uh, as well as uh, then what it looks like once we've implemented it. So there's two key parts to this, or three, I guess. We've got an action. The action is going to have a couple of custom fields, and then we have a run book that fires off the back of the action being completed. So first things first, we're going to go to configuration. We're going to go to tickets and actions, and we create a new action, and we're going to call this link to parent ticket. Uh, link to parent ticket. The icon can be whatever you want, although this is the most important thing to configure in Halo, so make sure you get one that makes sense to you. Um, I'm going to use the beer for now. Um, in a moment, we're going to set the system use to uh, start a run book, um, but we'll leave that for the moment because we haven't actually created that run book just yet. We're going to go over to the field list and we're going to add in two custom fields. We're going to, however, need to create those custom fields first. Um, unfortunately, on the action screen, we can't click add and then click add here, although on the ticket screen you can. So for now, we're going to save that. We're going to leave it on the field list um, for the moment. I'm going to go down to custom objects, custom fields, and we're going to create a new custom field. Now, the first custom field that we're going to create is going to be, um, we're going to call this client ticket types. This is going to be a single selection field. And the lookup type here is going to be a dynamic list. This is going to use a lookup method of uh, SQL and connect to our Halo database. And we now need to write in some SQL to return uh, a list of ticket types in this case. So I'm going to copy and paste this, but I'll run through it quickly. We've got requesting the RT ID or the request type ID as the ID value, the RT desk as the display or the RT description, so the request type description of incident alert, etc., um, to return to us as our ID and display. Now, we're getting this from faults and then joining the request type table back into the system. And the reason that we're doing that is we're actually showing only ticket types which are open for the customer of the ticket, right? So the way that that works is that we've got here and the area int is equal to select the A area from the area table, joining the site and users table, and then getting us where the user ID um, matches the user ID of the user on the ticket. Now we're also filtering out any deleted or merged tickets, as well as anything where the uh, status is n uh, nine, which in Halo is closed. We're also filtering out 35. I'm gonna remove that for the sake of the demo, but you can include here any other criteria you want to filter out certain things. And that is that. So we can save that one there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a second custom field called our ticket selection. This is again gonna be a single uh, select custom field of a dynamic list. And in this case, we're pulling in the fault ID as the ID, the symptom, the summary of the ticket as the uh, display value from faults again. And we're filtering out in this case, again, any tickets which are merged or closed um, or deleted. 
and showing us um, the exact same thing where we're only giving us the client's tickets. The difference is here, we've added this final line and request type new equals CF client ticket types. So what this will do is now, so if we select um, an incident as the ticket type, it will now only show us incident tickets in the list of available tickets, right? So we can select which ticket type we want to link, then click the ticket that we want to link. So I'm gonna save that as well. Then we're gonna go back to our action here and we're gonna add in our two fields. We're gonna add in our client ticket types and our ticket selection and hit save and hit save here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these two fields to a field group and I'm gonna call this link to parent. We're gonna to go to the defaults. We're gonna hide it from the end user at all points. We're gonna make them required on agent actions, but actually hidden from the new ticket and detail screen, because we don't really need to see these um, unless um, we're doing the action that we want to see them on. We're gonna add our new fields, and we're gonna call those, um, I'm gonna grab uh, the client ticket types and ticket selection, hit save, and save them there. Now, I'm gonna add that field group back into my action. And what we're also going to do is we're gonna add that to a ticket type. Um, ideally, we'd want to add this to all ticket types, uh, potentially, um, but for now, I'm just gonna add it to my incident ticket type. Perfect. So once that's been done, I can now go to an incident um, we do need to update the workflow for the ticket, but let's find an incident to start with. If we find an incident, I'm gonna to go to the workflow. You can do that now by clicking on the workflow as long as you've got the correct permissions um, from uh, the ticket, which is great. And come into here, and for now, I'm just gonna add into my list link to parent ticket. Now for reference, we are doing this in our demo or test environment, so you'll see a lot of this uh, looks kind of crazy. It's definitely not how our uh, builds typically look. Um, this is very much just used for testing. Cool, so I can click linked parent and you'll see here I now have a client ticket types drop down of which we can see there are four and I have a ticket selection. Now the ticket selection will show me nothing until I select an incident and now it will show me the tickets which are available. Now of course these are all called test but again in your instance they're going to show different names. We could also concatenate that a symptom with the user of the ticket, with the site of the ticket, any information you want really. Um, but for this purpose, we've just got the, um, uh, the uh, symptom of the ticket. So once I do that, I can hit save. Now, nothing's gonna happen when we do that because we're not triggering our run book yet, but you can see the process that we can go through now to select a ticket type to link and then select the ticket that we want to link. Again, if I was to select project here, that list changes now. Same with project task. All of this is updated based on the ticket types that we pick. So the final piece of this is that we need to create a run book. So we're gonna go over to configuration. We're gonna to go to integrations, all the way down to custom integrations and integration run books. Now, I've already created the run book um, this run book uses Halo API actions, which means it is almost entirely portable. Um, we're gonna put the uh, JSON for this in a guide, which we'll link on the uh, video, but um, we do still need to make an, a couple of amendments or you will need to make a couple of amendments when you get this um, imported. So for reference, you'll create a new run book, uh, give it a name, you don't need to add anything to it and hit save. You can then press this import from JSON button and we can import uh, the JSON that you will receive from us uh, in here. Now, when this comes in, it will look exactly like this. Um, and the first step is called get ticket details, but you'll see we're actually doing a Halo API action to update the ticket. Now, this is a bit of a, a clever hack. Um, shout out to Morgan who came up with this um, and actually used it in a couple of the run books um, that Halo create. Um, but what this does is by updating the ticket, but just passing the ID, it will return us all of the ticket details. 
So really, really clever way of not having to have a Halo API or our own Halo instance integrated into our Halo. Um, we can just use these Halo API actions, post to the ticket with the ticket ID and retrieve the entire ticket in response. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to create an output variable um, to link to uh, capture the ticket that we want to link to. Right? So if we click add, we're gonna call this ticket to link to. We're gonna save it as an integer. And in this case, we're gonna be capturing the custom field of our ticket selection uh, value. So this is gonna be response custom fields where the name is equal to our CF ticket selection, which is whatever you've called that custom field. And in this case, we want the value. Now, typically with our single selects, we're gonna get both a value and a display return to us. The reason that we have to use this Halo API action here to capture the value is that if we were to just use the CF uh, variable that you're given, um, that will always be the display in this case. I think Halo are working on something for this, but at the moment that is always going to return the display value, um, which isn't useful to us, right? That gives us the symptom of the ticket, not the ID of the ticket. So what this will do is actually return us the ticket ID of the ticket that we want to link to. So we're going to scroll down and hit save, and we're going to hit save in here. And in our link to parent ticket action, we can edit this action. You can see again, we're using a Halo API action of update ticket. We're setting the ID as the ticket ID of the ticket and the parent ID value to be that ticket to link to. And that is pretty much, well, that is entirely it for the runbook. So we can hit save on that and we can go back to our action, find our link to parent ticket, go to our system use and select runbook. And in here, we can select our runbook that we created earlier. Now, if I hit save, we're going to go back to our ticket. We're going to click link to parent ticket again. We're going to select the ticket that we want to link to. Hit save, and we can see run but queued. If I go to the automations tab, which you might not have, and I'll quickly show you where you can find it. If we go to the ticket type that we're in looking at, click on to incident here, go to the forms tab, click edit, and scroll all the way down. Under the agent ticket details form, you'll find display the auditing tab, which I recommend everybody turns on for every ticket type, as well as show the automations tab on the ticket details screen. Again, I would recommend turning this on for everyone. Both of uh, the automations tab will only show up if there are some automations on the ticket. The auditing tab will show up all the time, um, but is super helpful. That's what gives us this audit log here, but we're interested at the moment in our automations. You can see here, we've got our linked parent ticket automation that's run and it's completed. And you can even see on the right hand side now, we've got the parent ID of the ticket that we linked to. And that is that. Hopefully it's been useful. Um, the idea behind this is just to give us a bit of a nicer UI um, when we were linking to parent tickets. We actually use it as part of our uh, task process. So when we're creating a new task for a client, we will link it back to a project that they've uh, got open with us already. This has been Robbie. Hopefully this has been really useful and we will speak to you next time. Yeah.